Welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Salam Makbul, with you at PTV World. In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the current political situation of the country in light of the upcoming elections and what is going on in terms of various political parties preparing for the elections. We know that the ECP has issued the guidelines for nomination papers to be submitted, um, and a number of this, of course, is something that the parties are already aware of to contest the general elections on the 8th of February, as per the schedule, even though a lot of the uh, reports have been circulating around time and again with regards to the possible delay in elections with the most recent ones centering on the chief election commissioner's uh, credibility by various legal organizations uh, who seem to be saying that there cannot be free fair and transparent elections under his leadership at the same time we see that the electoral process continues unabated we of course have the deadline of 22nd of december for the submission of nomination papers uh, from various constituencies across the country and of course different political parties are just in the process of finalizing their candidates and then uh, moving forward with the process of submission their nomination papers. So we're going to be taking a look at what this means in terms of various constituencies of Pakistan um, where different political parties uh, will be putting up their best candidates and wh who are going to be the major candidates by different political parties contesting in these constituencies and what exactly will be um, uh, the most uh, occupied uh, political battleground um, where there is going to be a lot of contest in terms of uh, the voter base and how different political parties are actually are expected to perform in those constituencies. At the same time, we will also be taking a look at whether or not there is any possible hindrance in the process of uh, the elections taking place by the ECP, whether there are still any obligations um, that are required to be followed by the political parties and whether or not there is any possible hindrances that can be created through legal fora. And so we're going to be taking a look at all of this in terms of uh, the timeline that has already been issued um, by the election commission um, and what it is that we're looking at then uh, moving forward in terms of our political, economic and security situation in the country as to how exactly the country is moving forward with the election as per the schedule. This is what we're going to be focusing on in our show today. For this and more, as always, in the studios, I've been joined by senior analyst Farooq Fatafi and Raj Faisal. We've also been joined online by Dr. Niaz Murtaza, who's a political analyst, and Mr. Saladin Sabda's spokesperson, Falcon. And thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the discussion. I'll start with you, Saladin Sab, given, of course, um, what has been going on. Um, unfortunately, we have to keep reiterating that uh, the election is planned as per schedule, even though everything is still going as per uh, the requirements by the ECP. We have a date. We have the electoral <coughs> process that's continuing. We have the schedule even now. And, of course, the nomination papers deadline is also there. And so a lot of this is pointing towards the assurity uh, that the elections are, in fact, happening without any delay. At the same time, uh, there are talks and reports um, with a lot of organizations also objecting to the CEC's credibility. And this is just one of the many measures that are uh, causing a p potential delays in the elections. Uh, in the current situation, first of all, how do you see the current uh, electoral process uh, being uh, executed, especially when objections uh, to it are being raised? Um, and, and there's also talk of whether or not uh, a strict timeline is something uh, that is absolutely necessary uh, in light of um, any sort of situations that point otherwise. And you'll have to unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Yes, go ahead. Still can't hear you. Right. Can you hear me now? Right. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Hello, can go you ahead. hear me? Uh, okay. Yes, I can. So uh, I was saying that the election process has formally commenced now. Yesterday was the first day when the uh, returning officers were ex expected to uh, display the election program notification in their respective constituencies. And uh, we, we have seen that the election process is now uh, in full swing in all of the constituencies across Pakistan. So the next process will be the nomination of uh, candidates. The candidates, have, uh, candidates and their proposers and seconders have started receiving the nomination papers from the ECP uh, offices and returning officers. So uh, after that, uh, the, election, uh, the returning officers will be scrutinizing these candidates. So that will be the most important uh, aspect uh, regarding the fairness and impartiality of the election process. Uh, whether or not the uh, nomination papers are scrutinized using a, an objective criteria 
uh, and a similar criteria across the board uh, because we have seen examples in the past that one candidate's nomination papers were accepted uh, in one constituency while rejected in another constituency. This means that there were no objective criteria, or at least there were uh, two different criteria against which election commission or uh, returning officers were scrutinizing the candidates. So uh, we have been emphasizing about uh, uh, emphasizing on the objectivity of the criteria and the uniformity of the criteria uh, to, to ensure that the election is seen is being held in a transparent and fair, fair manner. Has been traditionally followed as well. Um, and, and what are your input? Um, as, as Parfin's uh, spokesperson in terms of uh, what the criteria needs to be. Uh, do you have uh, any input with regards to what it is that the ECP is actually looking for and how to ensure what you're saying prior to any objections being raised? So, so we have uh, Article 62 and 63 written in the Constitution. Uh, those articles give very specific uh, instructions about uh, the qualification and disqualification uh, of the candidate of the members of Majlis Shura, and and, and right. those apply on the candidates applying for the seat for Majlis Shura Parliament or uh, provincial assemblies. So, uh, the, there there are many specific and objective things in those uh, uh, qualifications that can be decided uh, by the uh, returning officers. We should also uh, Keep in mind that the uh, uh, scrutiny of nomination papers uh, is an administrative exercise. It is not a judicial exercise. So the returning officers um, uh, should ensure that uh, they, uh, they, uh, they have a checklist uh, according to the instructions provided to them during their trainings by the election commission uh, and the instructions noted in the handbooks given to them by the election commission and in the law. Uh, so they, they have this checklist with them and uh, they, uh, they, they just have to take across the whether or not all these uh, um, information and all these right. uh, characteristics can you, can you are... Also help me understand then that uh, when you talk about Article 62 and 63 in the criteria that's, that's um, uh, laid out uh, in those articles, then that means that that check of the, these two articles is not being conducted by the ROs, as you're saying, it's just administrative. So what they're doing is perhaps just looking at paperwork or documentation so to be in place according to the guidelines and the legal avenues. So the, uh, the, the criteria, so to speak, in terms of what is outlined in Article 62, and 63 is not being vetted at the moment. So in, in Article 62 or 63, there are uh, very objective things as well. There are things that may be interpreted differently and that may be uh, decided judicially. For example, uh, there is something written in the qualification of a voter as well as of the candidate that they should be of sound mind, they should not be of unsound mind. But the soundness of mind is something that is to be decided by a court of law. This is not to be decided by, by an election official, uh, election official or an, an administrative officer uh, working as a returning officer. So uh, this is something uh, that, uh, that a judicial exercise will determine that whether or not uh, a candidate uh, is honest or uh, profligate or uh, other such uh, subjective things that are mentioned in the Article 62 and 63. But there are other uh, objective things. For example, they should not be uh, uh, they should not be convicts. They should uh, not have. Uh, they should not be defaulters of banks. They should not be uh, uh, defaulters of uh, uh, utility companies. So these are very objective things uh, okay. that the returning officers so can so see when, and when can is, when decide exactly upon is the, uh, during when exactly the scrutiny exercises. Right. So, Raudin Sahib, when exactly is the judicial step taking place then? Uh, at what point does that come? And and not not the, not regardless. The judicial of the step the, the judicial step can can only be go by, by when uh, the judicial process, the uh, uh, judiciality of the process can be invoked by someone objecting to the candidate and going to the court and telling them that this is uh, somebody uh, who, uh, who who should not be uh, okay, so conducting an election as no a member of, of uh, parliament and uh, then the court can decide. If it is not without without a petition uh, uh, falling in the court, how can court, court decide about it? Right. Um, uh, Dr. Niaz, uh, the current situation, of course, is also uh, something that is being viewed in light of uh, what is being uh, talked about with different political parties and um, a level playing field. And as also outlined uh, by Salahuddin Saab, there needs to be a proper process uh, that needs to take place now that nomination uh, papers are uh, beginning to be submitted. Um, of course, this, this first check will be there in terms of who actually gets accepted and who doesn't. And so given the current scenario and the way that different political parties have been reacting previously, uh, do you foresee any major objections that can possibly be raised? Dr. Niaz, can you hear me? 
Well, I think slowly and but surely some of you know the. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes go ahead. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Niaz, go ahead. Hello? Yes, Dr. Niaz, I can hear you. So slowly but surely, you know, some of, you know, the unclarity uh, around the elections, you know, one by one, they are falling uh, by the way, and it's becoming more and more clear uh, that, you know, elections will take place on February 8th. And I don't remember any elections in Pakistan's history uh, which were, you know, delayed or cancelled or postponed after things had proceeded so far ahead uh, as now. At least in the last uh, two or three decades, I don't think that's happened. So I think uh, there are two things that need to happen. Uh, elections should be timely and they should be fair. Elections are not going to be timely. They'll still be about three months late. But I think it's becoming more and more clear that they won't be delayed beyond the three months, you know, the main reasons because of which they could have been delayed are all falling by the way, one by one, you know, the speed limitation. Uh, the Supreme Court has said that, you know, there cannot be any more challenges on the delimitation issue. That could have been a can of worms because, you know, there are, uh, you know, concerns expressed by different uh, uh, agencies, including, you know, uh, some of the bar associations, even earlier by Papan. Uh, but now, uh, you know, the Supreme Court has clearly said that, you know, the delimitation issue is over and nobody can challenge that. So now what can happen is, you know, uh, things like, you know, the nomination papers coming in and if, uh, you know, the uh, uh, ROs don't accept uh, the nomination papers of any candidate, they can go to, uh, you know, a, a, a tribunal or, you know, one of the opponents of any person can go to the uh, 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 tribunals and challenge uh, their uh, elect, uh, their uh, ability, their eligibility to take part in the elections. So how that gets used, uh, there are, you know, concerns about that, you know, especially with rela uh, regard to PTI, how, uh, you know, your, their uh, uh, candidates, to what extent they'll be allowed to, you know, uh, furnish their documents, uh, you know, freely, to what kind of, you know, criteria they will be held because as Mr. Sabda was saying, you know, there's a lot of, you know, ambiguity and, uh, you know, uh, subjectivity around some of them. Some of them are objective, but then some others are not. And already, you know, the PTI is raising the issue that, you know, some of its candidates are not being allowed to, you know, fill their nomination papers. There's pressure on other people. Every other day you hear uh, some more of its candidates dropping out. So the second issue about, you know, the freedom, uh, the fairness of elections, you know, if the timeliness issue is, you know, uh, uh, getting resolved, uh, you know, the issue about, you know, fairness, that's becoming more and more complicated. And I think it will become more and more complicated the further we come closer to, you know, the February 8th issue. And the Supreme Court has done well to put its foot down on the timing issue. But I think there needs to be, you know, some decisive, you know, uh, interjection by the Supreme Court on, you know, fair and free elections uh, as well. Otherwise, you know, even if we hold elections on time uh, by February 8th, and if they're not fair, then, you know, we will not have uh, either economic stability, political stability, security stability. So the purpose that elections are supposed to fill, uh, to give the country a new chance, a new direction, fresh impetus, all that will be missing once, you know, the new government comes in. Right, but Dr. Niaz, I also want to understand what exactly is it that you're looking for in terms of what the Supreme Court should be doing or any other body should be doing in terms of ensuring free elections prior to them actually being conducted because so far these assurances are being given out by the caretaker set up by the ECP claiming that they are going to be proceeding with free and fair elections. The different political parties and their stances pre and post elections is something that we've seen previously also in, in, in perhaps every election that has happened in the country. So are we just uh, talking about uh, those put potential objections uh, that can come from political parties or is it something fundamentally uh, happening right now that you can point out uh, that that can be uh, contained at, at this moment to ensure free elections? Well, I think there's three things. First of all, you know, the fact that such a large number of, you know, PTI uh, uh, members and to a lesser extent even, you know, 
PTM uh, members, uh, they are in jail. And, you know, if they are in jail, their ability to, you know, file their papers, to run a campaign, uh, that will be a compromise. Then, you know, a lot of people have been forced to go into hiding. And then, you know, there's the fact that, you know, if they come out of hiding, you know, there's usually this press conference, you know, where they say that, you know, we are leaving PTI. So, you know, I think uh, uh, there should be some action on that, just as there was some action on, you know, the timing issue. Uh, why are people being held so uh, long without, you know, bail? I mean, without conviction, it's wrong to, you know, just keep people uh, indefinitely in jail. So even with Imran Khan, the issue is that, you know, he has been uh, released on bail in the one case for which he was convicted, which is the Tosha Khanna case. But now he's in jail uh, for those cases where there is no conviction. So why? I mean, you know, they don't look like cases where, you know, you need to keep somebody behind bars. It's very unlikely that, you know, he'll run away. And the same is true for so many other, uh, you know, PTI leaders. So all of that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, you know, I can almost see what uh, the European Union will write in its report. There are, uh, you know, news that it may not even send a full-fledged uh, uh, delegation this time, maybe, you know, a smaller one. But, you know, whatever was written in 2018, it will be magnified 10 times, 20 times this time, the way things are going. All right. Um, and Faisal, these are important aspects as to uh, what uh, we are expecting from these elections. And as Dr. Nia said, timing is one thing, and we're hoping that that doesn't change at all and perhaps wouldn't at this point. But in terms of uh, uh, elections being fair and different political parties also reacting, how do you see then the issues um, that Dr. Niaz ha has raised, especially in terms of the political party's demand for a level playing field? Uh, how much of that can the ECP um, actually offer, the caretakers that actually ensure? Because then there are, of course, legal or security concerns that, that are being raised um, as something that both these organizations or the government cannot do anything about, that they're only able to extend a level playing field till that they can actually do it. So is, is there still something that, that can be done or can be raised by the caretaker setup or the ECP in terms of, of the legal aspects of political parties um, and the cases against them? Yes, Sana, obviously, if we talk about the level playing field, of course, the level playing field was a, a, a phrase which was obviously introduced by a political party that is obviously, uh, you know, uh, seen uh, uh, on all of the screens and when it comes to obviously other parties I'm talking about two major parties PTI and uh, uh, People's Party nowadays obviously both of the parties they are uh, claiming that the level level playing field is not being provided to them to get into elections uh, but all I wanted to say is that the interim government uh, obviously is installed to ensure that the level playing field is provided with and in accordance to the constitution of Pakistan, of course, they are allowing, uh, hmm. uh, you know, all of the parties to have that uh, uh, level playing field. But I want but to understand what, what you what you understand by this term level playing field, Faisal, especially in light of what Dr. Nia said in terms of those people who are behind bars or wait, awaiting trial for their cases. Um, it does level playing field mean that we extend them the opportunity to contest in the elections? By the, by the looks of it, uh, you know, what I see that why PTI considers that it is not the level playing field because they believe that the majority of, uh, you know, their leadership, if it is behind the bars and if they have cases against them, then that is uh, entirely just because of that they are not being provided with the level playing field. But this is not the case. Of course, the cases against them, they are related to one certain day that was 9th May. Mm. Whatever happened on that day, of course, that that is when the uh, you know cases got initiated against them and the majority of the leadership sort uh, in different constituencies of uh, uh, Pakistan be it uh, provincial constituencies or be it national assembly constituencies of course their uh, uh, you know people if they had any sort of involvement related to 9th May of course the law is taking uh, its course against them when right, it comes but to Faisal, my question is what do you understand by the term level playing field I understand that the all of the political parties, the all of the political parties, they should be having an equal chance of uh, obviously contesting the elections, which of course different parties mm. consider that they are not being provided with. But including to me, those behind bars, including, including PTI. yeah, including them. 
of course, and the People's Party. The People's Party has different, uh, you know, uh, aspect to it, and they believe that the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the alliances which were created and the help which was provided to uh, PMLN to have them alliances, be it Balochistan, be it Sindh province, the urban Sindh provinces, obviously, uh, you know, they were having uh, alliances. They created them alliances uh, in Karachi, in Hyderabad, and if we talk about Balochistan, they created them uh, alliances in there as well so it is a sort of uh, you know uh, by the looks of it it feels as if uh, one party is going ahead and that is obviously PMLN but to me Sana the most important aspect is that if somebody is having cases against them that has nothing to do with the elections related to 9th May whatever the cases are they are entirely on the basis of obviously law is taking its course if somebody was involved uh, uh, that day if somebody was involved in some kind of violence then it uh, you know that individual would not not be let free okay. and uh, b because that is in the larger interest of the country but uh, when I was hearing uh, you know uh, Dr. Niaz he uh, you know highlighted an excellent point and that was related to the world is of course watching Pakistan the uh, uh, you know even the people of Pakistan they are uh, you know relying on this uh, coming up election because all of their hopes are obviously attached to this election because we are a democratic country and the democratic country requires a democratic process and that process can only be achieved through the free and fair election and that free and fair election will of course you know uh, set a course for the future of Pakistan when I say set a course of the future of Pakistan I mean that the political stability and the economic stability both of them they are interlinked with this election if the elections are not free and fair of course once more we will see that the people of uh, Pakistan the majority of the people of Pakistan once again they will be on the roads uh, you know requiring a, a fresh election once more so once for all free and fair election it is contested and the fresh will of the people is on the constitu uh, uh, constitution avenue of Pakistan and that is what the only solution is to all of the problems which are being faced by Pakistan. All right, um, Farooq, I also want to understand your perspective on this and we've spoken about this earlier also, but I want to know given the current scenario and the fact that now we're at the step of um, uh, getting nomination papers from different political parties um, and, and the fact that, of course, it's extremely important every single time in the country to have free and fair elections. Um, and, and while we talk about the schedule of the elections take place and the electoral process moving um, as per the schedule, um, what sort of guarantees do we have at this moment um, in terms of the process in itself, in terms of how different political parties are being treated, that we are actually heading towards free and fair elections, and if not, what actions can be taken, and, and also given what the political parties' perception have, is, is, there a, is there a blurring of lines between asking for concessions and asking for a level playing field? Uh, right, uh, Sana, I think that uh, essentially you have uh, hit the nail on the head when you have actually uh, you know identified the two as different concessions are not level playing field right anybody and everybody would want the establishment to actually stand behind them and uh, identify them as the chosen ones right uh, and if that doesn't happen of course there you hear complaints about level playing field that is not essentially level playing field that is give me the higher ground mm. right uh, now, uh, uh, regarding uh, what was said earlier about people who are incarcerated, look, I cannot uh, speak uh, uh, for the entire, uh, you know, uh, judicial process in the country, but I don't want to also pretend that there wasn't May 9th. May 9th did not happen, right? Uh, Pakistan at this moment and Pakistan's discourse has gone funny right now because uh, there was a blow to the head on May 9th and we are, uh, uh, you know, in the state of concussion. Uh, at this moment, there is so much speculation, so much fear that elections will not be held in time. Uh, the only uh, example where elections were delayed, and there was a reason, uh, we debated that at that time also, was uh, the case of Punjab. I'm not mentioning Khyber Pakhtunkhwa because the Honorable Court at that time did not, uh, you know, think 
or consider Khyber Pakhtunkhwa worthy of be even being mentioned in that, that context. It was only Punjab that the previous bench was obsessed about and they kept on actually talking about it and then election did not happen. Um, uh, right now, I think your question uh, earlier to Faisal, what exactly constitutes uh, uh, level playing field for Sana? I think that was spelled out very effectively at the start by Salauddin Saab when he said that criteria mm. uh, should be a, uh, uh, applied uh, and then it sh there should be standardization of criteria. If uh, uh, you have different criteria, if Article 62, uh, certain aspects of Article 62, 63, uh, you know, go to sleep when I'm uh, competing, but uh, when Faisal goes there, uh, they spring back to life, then that becomes a problem. I don't think that is an issue right now because there is very clear indication that this is not the place where these things will happen, right? Uh, regarding Imran Khan Saab, I think we have heard that he is going to, uh, you know, contest from three constituencies. We know one more lady who is actually inca incarcerated she is going to compete against Maryam Nawaz uh, and we keep on hearing about the various things. Uh, now the point is that <coughs> if you are not indicted by a court of law, then you can contest, right? Uh, if, uh, uh, if, the, uh, if you are not actually convicted, I'm sorry. If you are not convicted, you can contest election. So with that kind of a state of affairs, we still have to wait and see, but I think that the guarantee that you were asking about is already there. Mm. It is the constitution of Pakistan. It is the Supreme Court of Pakistan which actually took a very direct action. Now, do I expect the apex court of the country to open its doors and uh, take so motor cases of various political leaders who might be involved in some kind of mutiny and they should be heard immediately? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think that Supreme Court of Pakistan has to contend with its own pendency, which is quite staggering, Sana. It is beyond thousands and thousands of cases that are there. Uh, and I once told you that I, I also, my family also had similar kind of case. So I would actually expect that the Honorable Court keeps on moving on merit, mm. but then those people who, are, who might be incarcerated, they should get fair trial. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm all for process, but procedure, but I don't buy, I did not buy it that 2013 elections were rigged. I did not buy it that 2018 elections were rigged. Why would I believe that these elections are? Because actions have consequences. Mm -hmm. If you uh, actually break something, it breaks. If you actually attack somebody, you are held back by others. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, uh, we want to actually just think that what happened on May 9th or for that matter what happened on January 6th in America did not uh, you know, constitute an offense, that's okay. But actions have consequences. And then because Pakistan is a complex country, complicated country, uh, because of that the consequences are also con uh, complicated. I think that PTI is navigating these issues now in a better way than it was when May 9th happened. I wish they had actually, uh, you know, uh, taken sane advice back then, then we wouldn't be in this mess. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Sir Azim Saab, I also want your input with regards to the guidelines that have been issued on the submission of nomination papers and how exactly you think it will be ensured that um, everyone gets an equal chance, uh, the ones who are eligible to uh, submit their nomination papers, including those for reserved seats in different constituencies and whether or not there is any possibility um, uh, or within uh, the uh, procedures um, uh, not to include anyone. Uh, with regards to different constituencies and also add to that given the fact that uh, the delimitations uh, have been finalized uh, have you uh, made peace with whatever delimitations um, are finalized right now in light of the objections that were raised earlier uh, <coughs> okay Sana. Uh, when we talk about the level playing field or equal chances uh, uh, we only refer to the level playing field for uh, major political parties 
we do not think of uh, uh, of women of transgenders of of person with disabilities uh, many of them may want to contest elections uh, but we, we we do talk about uh, whether or not pti candidate will uh, will be made it out of favorable uh, uh, dealing in the ro office but we do not think whether a woman uh, we, we have uh, we have instances where returning officers uh, answered uh, uh, where returning officers uh, scolded uh, the person with disabilities and uh, told them that they should not be coming to the uh, they, they should not be contesting election they should uh, they should be staying at home so so right. so that are also uh, issues of inclusivity of level playing field that 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 we should keep uh, uh, in front of us and uh, uh, the past practices should not be repeated uh, this time and uh, now coming to the specific uh, question about the delimitation the delimitations are now final and uh, election commission uh, uh, has appointed the returning officers against the constituencies that were delimited so uh, these delimitations are now here to stay at least for for longer time because next census will be held uh, not very soon at least uh, unless uh, un uh, unless uh, Co council of common interests decides differently so, so, so that is uh, that is final, and, and and the nomination process now will take its course, and it will conclude uh, sometime by twenty uh, second or twenty third, and then the scrutiny process will start, will which will continue uh, for, for seven days, and after that the campaign period will start. So, so th right. that's the uh, timeline. Uh, Sahib, like I'm I'm glad you spoke about inclusivity, and I want to I want to question this further um, uh, with regards to uh, what you've seen previously and what people have unfortunately experienced. How then is it possible for us to move ahead and ensure that that doesn't happen? At the end of the day, you have a huge number of ROs and DROs that are assigned uh, different constituencies, um, and they are at the end of the day people who have their own biases and they and they're presented. And of course, there's the accountability that can happen after any incidents take place. But how do we ensure that in the in the process in itself, we are able to give that level playing field to to all uh, uh, who are wishing to contest the elections and how exactly will will the seats in these constituencies also reflect that and, and, and Saladi sahab i wanted to add to the question regarding inclusivity and that was the case in various parts of pakistan where uh, en masse women are forbidden by the tri tribal jirgas right. to vote uh, when this happens it essentially is the failure of election commission is there a way to hold them accountable when this happens? And Salauddin Saab, you're a busy man. I have a question mm -hmm. as well. In each constituency, what is the uh, set mark for uh, how much a, uh, you know, a candidate can spend on, uh, uh, you know, in, in a single constituency for the campaign purposes, for the political campaign purposes? So uh, starting with Sana's question, uh, I think uh, the election commission should be investing more and more in the training of election officials, training of the returning officers, district returning officers, and presiding officers to ensure in, to ensure that they are well versed uh, regarding the requirements of inclusivity of the level playing field for all segments of society, for all political parties, be be the major or minor, uh, so, uh, and so that the election uh, election process is uh, seen to be uh, fair and uh, uh, the Article 25 is regarded that that says that the uh, all citizens are equal before law so so these persons these election officials are custodian of the law uh, of the elections act so they they should be treating all citizens with equality so so uh, and that that will come uh, with a repeated emphasis uh, on their trainings in their during their trainings in, in their handbooks and the instructions passed on to them now uh, coming to the question uh, that uh, pitafis have referred to regarding the uh, bar on women in voting or, in, or or contesting for election i think the election commission has vast powers under the article uh, under section 9 of the elections act that says that the election commission can even uh, initiate uh, uh, an in initial criminal proceeding against the persons uh, who who the commission thinks are involved in barring women from uh, contesting uh, from uh, 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 exercising their right to vote so uh, election commission should should not only be waiting uh, uh, that the uh, that these candidates uh, uh, or certain candidates certain parties or certain local elders uh, bar women from voting it should pro proactively be uh, it should be coming proactively and uh, starting action against uh, the people who are uh, who are known to be uh, uh, to to be involved in such exercises uh, for instance uh, uh, on the basis of uh, past election of 2018 election uh, election commission has uh, list of polling station where turnout remained less than 10 percent uh, why not election commission starts uh, uh, 
starts on its own motion proceedings uh, or at least investigations uh, in the uh, in those areas in those in the in those areas and those polling stations where the turnout remained less than 10% and start uh, criminal proceeding if it found that the, uh, there was an, an agreement to bar women from contesting elections and and, and the last question by uh, farooq sahab uh, yes, uh, I, 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 uh, I missed that question. Can you can you repeat it? It was it was related to how much money a candidate is allowed to spend in a constituency, a single constituency, for the campaign purposes, sir. So the, the recently the recently in the recent amendment that the uh, outgoing parliament passed uh, and were enacted on August five, uh, the, the uh, campaign expense limit was enhanced. It, earlier it was four uh, four million for national assembly constituency. Now it is ten million for national assembly constituency and four million for the provincial assembly constituency. So that that is the legal limit that the, that a candidate can spend on an election obviously it is uh, it is more than what ordinary pakistanis can afford to uh, spend in their lifetime even uh, there are many pakistanis who, who won't uh, earn this much money uh, in the, in their lifetime so so that is already uh, a lot of money but uh, Whenever you but talk to a candidate, uh, they, they will frankly tell you that they uh, all the winning candidates, at least uh, all the runner-ups, they spend even far more than this money uh, during their election campaigns. So, so uh, our elections, uh, we, we have talked this about this in, in, in one of our previous program that election is becoming costlier with every passing election. Uh, we need to take some radical measures. Uh, to bring it uh, to make it affordable for larger population otherwise uh, it will uh, it will become a game of a few uh, rich men's club rich uh, or rich uh, political families club uh, and their they game to play uh, after every five years most of pakistan will start losing their uh, interest in the entire electoral uh, exercise right thank you for that saladin sahab uh, dr niaz i also want to touch upon the uh, different political parties, candidates, and the major constituencies that we'll be seeing as major political battlegrounds um, uh, with different political parties. Uh, which uh, 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 areas do you see uh, as being, being the hot points uh, for, for the electoral contest? And uh, which political parties do you think will be neck-to-neck uh, uh, -neck in these areas? Well, you know, you asked about the definition of the level playing field. Sure, go ahead. I mean, uh, a level playing field is one where, you know, the whole playing field is on the same level. But for this election, we seem to be having a playing field with just three levels. Uh, three, uh, you know, at the lowest level is PTI, people in jail, on the run. And at the top level, you have, you know, a PMLN with, you know, strong winds blowing electables on its, uh, towards it despite its very poor performance. And somewhere in between is, you know, PPP, where it's not facing, you know, the same crackdown as PTI. But then, you know, the winds are not blowing towards PPP the way they are towards PMLN. And that's PPP's complaint, really. It's not that, you know, it's under any crackdown. That's why the winds are not blowing in its direction. So, uh, you know, I think that will stay a structural issue right till the end. And I see how that's going to change. And uh, most of the parties are, you know, uh, going for, you know, their traditional uh, 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 candidates, you know, the big electables, people who can, uh, you know, uh, bring the money to, you know, afford uh, their own campaigning, the figures that Mr. Safdar was mentioning. Uh, the only uh, difference maybe, you know, with in PTI's case, with all the, you know, people that have been forced to leave, it's, uh, you know, now starting to use some new kind of, you know, tactics. So, for example, it's going to field a lot of, uh, you know, lawyers uh, instead of, you know, electables and so on. You see a lot of, you know, lawyers, even the new president uh, of the party is a lawyer, actually. He's not a traditional politician. So it seems that, you know, PTI has decided that it will, you know, field new uh, candidates, uh, a lot of them lawyers, and then, you know, the... Uh, virtual, uh, you know, meeting that it had with the use of, you know, artificial intelligence. Right. Now, all these are you know, novel, but, you know, to what extent they will deliver, that remains to be seen, because at the end of the day, you know, a virtual uh, meeting is one thing, but being able to, you know, go and vote on the day of election for somebody, you know, that you want to vote, and that person being allowed to, you know, run in the elections, all that is going to be very different. So, a lot of unknowns still uh, left, but you know things are not looking too good.
Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Niaz Murtaza, for joining us and being part of the debate. And thank you, Sladi Sabda Saab, for being part of the debate as well. Um, and Farooq, an interesting point raised by uh, Dr. Niaz, and I'd like uh, your perspective on that as well, the use of AI now in politics. And of course, we saw uh, this, this, uh, this sort of first uh, of its kind mm -hmm. attempt being made by PTI in Pakistan. Um, but uh, the, these are, of course, um, uh, precarious situations, and, and AI in itself is something that we're all getting accustomed to, and there's so yeah. much still that is developing and coming forward every single day. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you s foresee in terms of how AI is, is going to be used in politics within the country, and what sort of things should we be on the lookout for in terms of its potential abuse? Uh, right, uh, Sana, I think that the biggest concern uh, always remains deep fakes. Uh, mm. that there is going to be certain, uh, you know, uh, things that might actually cause negative aspersions on people's characters or mm. something of the similar sort. So I think that if Pakistan's politics is beyond that. When a politician is explaining, if some scandal actually breaks about me, or for that matter, Raja Saab, uh, then that, that might have consequences. But we have seen that politicians more and more are made of Teflon. What has not broken in the past two years? I mean, what kind of visual, uh, visuals we have seen, what kind of audios that have been leaked. But that doesn't seem to actually dent the popularity uh, just because of that very leak itself. So I don't think that will be a biggest concern. Regarding AI, I think it was more like uh, 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 a, it was AI. And then, of course, it was a very clever use of graphics and voice. Uh, controls as well uh, with that kind of voice modulation of course it is going to help um, and that actually speaks to the fact that uh, PTI has a very strong uh, expatriate uh, you know flank mm. uh, mm. because the, those people who are sitting up abroad and especially in Silicon Valley mm. if they are with the party they can of course really help it but that doesn't mean that it is going to sway the elections in any way at all. Uh, but I would also like to, to speak uh, to the uh, point about People's Party actually decrying lack of uh, level playing field. Sure. Have you noticed that they have stopped talking about it? And this happened after, uh, you know, the uh, interior, uh, Kedekara, yeah. interior minister actually stepped down and, and joined, their joined their party. Right? Yeah. So, so, so the they got some of the wind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so they, they finally <laughs> built a dam and that equals somehow PMLN. And I think that PTI gradually is also going to come around and yeah. everybody is going to accept the elections. The best way to fix elections or quality of elections is for the electoral process to continue. Mm. We, we lose heart because uh, we are new to the game and we keep on thinking that and perhaps we are too intense. But I think in coming days, no matter what happens, as long as the process continues, Sana, we are going to get better and better quality of democracy with every every electoral process. Right. So now, uh, yes. I wanted to I wanted to include in as well uh, regarding uh, you know the uh, use of AI in terms of uh, you know uh, obviously bringing uh, somebody uh, from prison straight out and obviously their speech uh, I mean uh, his speech was uh, highlighted as well. Uh, you know, regardless of but our political uh, affiliations, regardless... But that can open uh, uh, the whole thing to sabotage as well. Yes. Hey, exactly, exactly. All of Obviously, the negative... Even, uh, even, uh, the gentleman st starts saying <laughs> stuff which is not acceptable to the <laughs> entire audience, what happens <laughs> Exactly then? it is. Uh, but uh, I think the fact that, uh, you know, I have been going through, uh, obviously, the response which was being shown on the international media related to it. I mean, uh, regardless of our political affiliations or if we are w going to vote for a certain party or not, but I think this initiative which is brought in by PTI as a political party, and it's, of course, as Farooq has mentioned, that, uh, you know, few of the names who are backing PTI, they are sitting in the Silicon Valley and uh, they... Or they elsewhere. Yeah, or elsewhere and they have been using it and uh, uh, of course quite a few of them I have uh, met as well in the past, they are best at their work and I think this initiative represents that the uh, Pakistani youth, wherever they are, uh, Pakistani nationals, they are, uh, you know, uh, doing their best and bringing in a positive impact even uh, of uh, the a usage of AI 
AI was basically used for the negative purposes in the politics before. Mm. This is the very first time that it has been used so, for so a you're positive. So you're welcoming it. I am welcoming it. So Why? Right. Because yeah. Yes, of course. But uh, because there Sana, are things to yes. It it gives a it gives us such an uh, such an excellent uh, sort of impression of uh, being a Pakistani. But we have because to be cautious, don't we? They have set they have set a precedent for rest of the world. It can be a dangerous precedent. Yeah, it can be dangerous, no, no, but it's a good initiative. Yeah, hang okay, on, hang on. sure. No, it yes, is, yes, uh, hang on. Uh, just to point out, <laughs> there are dobo calls all over the world mm, that actually mm. take place, and they yeah. have been taking place for eight years. So you can't say that this was new precedent. For I think Pakistan, though. Yeah, for Pakistan, Pakistan, but he said for the entire world. So perhaps Moon and Jupiter <laughs> also. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just wanted to actually point out that uh, artificial intelligence will only become relevant to Pakistan politics mm -hmm. when real politics also starts becoming relevant. Yeah. Uh, real that real uh, intelligence also, right? That is yeah. And I mean that very simply not by, uh, I don't mean espionage, but I mean <laughs> smart people being welcomed in politics. I don't think we are there yet. Yeah, sure. and, and yes. Sana, Sana, a very last point. <laughs> I very, want to be the quickly. last one today. Okay. Uh, you know, they have started no using, it, you know? they <laughs> have started <laughs> using the voice <laughs> through AI Time is not far when uh, the robots, they will be actually brought in and of course their uh, you know, pictures and each and everything, they would look like the real leader and yeah. of course the voice uh, okay. would be the same. All, well. all you will have so to do, Sana, is 3D pretend Raja Pasal to <laughs> participate in the program. <laughs> 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 all right, on that note, we're going to end our today's discussion and we really hope that whatever areas that we are exploring, we do so carefully and that whatever happens is in the benefit of the country and of course that we are backed by sense and our constitution as we proceed towards elections. That's all that we have from the debate. We'll now see you tomorrow.